Hey everyone, Zach here, and welcome to lesson 6 of the series Learning C++ by Making Games. In this video, we'll go over declaring and initializing variables. This video has been brought to you by my Patreon sponsors like Nemian Games. In this video, we'll go over what declaring means, what initializing means, and we'll look at them in relation, and then we will look at some code and go over how to get the sizes of various variables, like I mentioned in the previous video. So first, we have to declare a variable, and declaring a variable is giving a variable a name and a type. So our types are integer, float, boolean, etc. And a name can be whatever you want it to be, but your names should make sense. Think about it this way. If you put your code down for a week and go back to look at your code, will you know what that variable is? If not, it probably has a bad name. So try to use a name that explains what the variable is. There are no good or bad names per se. There are only names that work. And these will vary from people to people. Everyone has an opinion on this. I do recommend not using X, Y, and Z as variable names just because you're not going to remember what they are. But that, again, everyone has their own opinion. Another way to think about declaration of a variable or declaring a variable is to think of it like telling the system that it should allocate a space in memory for a variable X that will be called whatever you're going to name it. So it's going to the system, hey, save space for an integer named age or save space in memory for a float named pi. Once you've declared a variable, you have to initialize that variable. And what that means is giving a value to that variable. That's all it means. So once you've initialized a variable, say age as an integer, you have to give it a value that is a whole number. You can't mix at this, you can't mix a float into there, you will get an error, so it has to match the correct type. So there are multiple ways to go about declaring and initializing variables. And which option you use depends on, well, you or who you're working for. But you can declare and then never initialize a variable. So you declare it and then you never give it a value. Now, the compiler will give you a warning, or in some cases, an error, and you really shouldn't do this. You could declare and initialize at the same time, and you have to do this for constants like we talked about in the last video. Also, once you've initialized it, if you don't use the variable, the compiler will also give you a warning saying, hey, you've declared and initialized this variable, but you haven't used it. What's up? And you could declare and then initialize the variable later on. So you declare it in one line and then several lines later you initialize it. So all of that said, open up a project in Visual Studio or whatever editor you're using and let's practice different ways of declaring and initializing our variables. I'll see you in a moment. All right, so here we are back inside of a empty project. And all we're gonna do in here is go over first how to initialize and declare variables. So we're gonna do a couple for each of our types. So first thing I'm going to do is I am going to talk about declaring and initializing using C plus, or using the C style. So for this, what we're going to do is we are going to declare variables and I'm going to do bool b is running and I forgot to put my semicolon in so I've declared a boolean variable we're going to do character first initial and you notice on the boolean I did that b is running that lowercase b just stands for bool it is an old naming convention you don't need to follow it I will throughout any of the work I'll do uh, in this series and other series. We're gonna do integer, we'll do exam score. We will do a float and that'll be rent. And we will do double and that will just be pi. So I have now declared these variables. I will initialize the variables in what's known as C style. 
So this is the classic way of initializing a variable. And sorry about that. I will do b is running is equal to one. So that'll be true. First initial, I just want to make sure I spelled that right, will be z. And notice I have to use the single quotes around this. And again, notice after each of these, I am indeed using a semicolon. And I will then do my exam score and I'll set that to 90. My rent is a float, so I'll do rent is equal to, uh, let's just pick a random number, 550. And then I will do pi, I'm gonna try to capital P there, is equal to 3.1, sorry, 14159265359. There we go. And now, how do I know that this actually works? Well, what we can do is we can do what we've done in the last video. So we'll just, for good practice, put some comments in. Display our variable values. So std see out the program is running. And then I'll do b is running. And then I'll do my standard end line. Do stdc out my first, I'm not sure why I made that capital. First initial is, and then we'll do first initial, and then std end line. I'll right, worry about that error in a minute. I will probably have just skipped something very, very, oh. I skipped the carrots there. Sorry about that. So make sure you have your carrots at the right before B is running. I got a space carrots exam score. No space this time, so I want the percent right against the number on my exam. We'll stop, however, and then our end line. SEDC out. The rent on that house is no space this time, so I want it to butt against the dollar sign. Carrots, rent, STD, end line. And STDC out one last time, our lovely carrots. Pi is an irrational number that approximates, I just spelled approximates wrong, approximates, and then this time I do want the space, and then I'm gonna do my pi value. Of course, I need the carrots, otherwise I'm gonna get that error from before. And then my end line. All right, so you can see that the colors also line up. You can see I was trying to fill in, when I had the carrots in, which variables I wanted. But let's go ahead and test this, make sure it works. All right, we see we have it running as one. There is a way to actually get that to say true versus false. Um, we'll go over that later on in a different video. It has the first initial, the 90% showing up, the rent is showing up. You do notice it cuts off that last zero. And again, there's a way to handle that. And we can talk about that in another video. And it does truncate us a bit here on our double. So what happens if we add in a long in front of, a long in front of this double? I'm not sure why I said king double. You notice it still truncates it. So it's still storing the data, but we are getting a truncated version of it. All right, so this is our C style. We have other ways of declaring our variables though. And let's explore those methods. So now that we've done our C style, let's do our C++ constructor style. So we're just gonna, I'm gonna highlight all of this. I'm gonna hold the control K and then C to do that. I am going to then make a new declaration. I shouldn't have all the double comments on that now. We'll do our declare and initialize variables using the C++ constructor. So the way that's gonna work is we're gonna do bool again, b is running. So same name as before, that way we don't have to worry about changing what's down there. So we have B is running and notice now the little red squiggle is gone from the B is running. We're gonna do character 
first initial and inside the round brackets or parentheses I'm going to put in the single quotes and the letter we will do an integer we'll do exam score and again round brackets I'm just gonna put in 90 same number as before so I'll put 91 and so we have a different number coming up and what I'll do for rent is the same as I did before so we'll do you know we'll just keep it the same number so we know it's coming up right we'll do our float rent and that will be if I can get the capitals right 500.50 and then we have our double pi and uh, I'm actually gonna cheat on this one a tiny bit I'm gonna copy the number so I don't have to retype it and that should be a capital there we go and you notice that now all of the colors have changed back all the squiggles are gone if I hit run after it's done compiling we'll have the same thing as before so it's working correctly so that's the other way you can declare and initialize and then we have the C++ constructors for C++ 11 and all the 11 stands for is 2011 if I remember correctly the year it was released so there are updates to C++ and those updates just change some minor things all right again I'm gonna highlight this code control K C and we're gonna do our declare and initialize variables using the C++ 11 constructor so again bool same as before B is running and I'm gonna use the curly brackets and then all right Visual Studio for some reason adds a space in you don't need that space you can actually delete it and it will work just as fine first initial and again put that in at the comma uh, the semicolon to end the line Visual Studio will add that space in then exam score curly bracket 90 close that out float rent that was 550 again close it out add in that uh, semicolon and our double pi and once again I'm gonna cheat and just hit paste and put a semicolon at the end there and again notice that everything is now running if I hit play it will work the same way as before so those are the ways you can declare your variables now you, as I mentioned in one of the other videos you can change the length or value oh, sorry can change the value. I did mention changing the length, and we talked about that with the long on the double. You couldn't see it, unfortunately. It's just the limit on what's printed on the screen. But we can actually have dynamic variables. So the way that can work, for example, let's just comment all of this out for a minute. And that's again control KC. And let's declare two floats. Actually, let's declare three floats. So we're gonna do a float. And we're going to use the C11 constructors, and we're going to do float length of room, and that'll be, we'll declare it with a value of zero to begin with. We'll do float width of room, and again, we'll declare it with a value of zero. We'll do float area of room, and also I want to keep my capital O there of room and again we'll declare it with a value of zero so we've declared and initialized sorry I said declare I'm gonna initialize the value of zero so we've declared and initialized it actually I lied we're gonna just declare this one we are then going to initialize that value in a moment so what we're gonna do is we're gonna do an STD C out and then we're gonna ask please input the width Actually, no, length is what we have first. Length of the room. And it's assuming it's a square room. I also forgot to put in my std caret caret std end line. And then we're going to do our c in. And that will be our length of room. And then we're going to do another console out. Please input the width of the room. And I'm not gonna worry about my fact my capitals have changed because this is not gonna be really used for anything. And then we'll do our SEDC in 
and then we'll get width of room. Got to remember that semicolon at the end, otherwise we will, will run into issues. And finally, what we'll do is we'll initialize our area of room. So we'll do area of room is equal to length. I'm not sure why it's not letting me do length. Length of room times width of room. And then we'll do a STD C out. And the area of the room is, and we're going to assume we've entered this data in feet or whatever you want to change it to if you're not working in feet, if you're working in metric, which is a better system. Of course, I made a mistake. Enter your carrots there. Carrots again. I didn't mean to hit enter. Sorry, the microphone is in the way. Square feet. And then STD end line. So that's how you can combine values. So let's test this out. And I'm going to show you a couple of things. We're going to run this twice, actually. Okay, so there we are. We have a pop up. Please input the length of the room. And we'll do 10 feet by 20. So it should be 200 square feet. And there we are, 200 square feet. Now, we can also do something a little bit weird. We're going to do 10 and 20 again. So I'm just going to enter 10 and 20 at the same time. Notice that it reads the first value. So if we just move this here, it reads the first value as length. And because I have put in another value, it does it over there with the width already. And because we've already put that information in, it jumps down to the next bit. To make sure it's working as floats, we're just going to do 10.1 and 20.1. There we are. So we can see that the float is working correctly. All right, so that's how you can change them as you go on. And if you want to play around with the uh, other declarations you can use, such as constant, which we will do later in the series. Um, actually, in this game, we'll be doing it in our number guesser. You can. And I also mentioned that I was going to show you guys um, how to set up. Oh, sorry, I hit the wrong thing. How to set up our or how not to set up, how to get the information with regards to the size of random values. And so the way you can do that is we're going to do std cout size of bool. It would help via quotes in there, wouldn't it? Size of a bool. And then I'm just going to do this word, size of. And then I'm going to do bool. And then I'm going to do also make sure that it's spelled correctly. STD end line. And I'm going to cheat a bit. I'm just going to copy this line a couple of times. And when I say a couple of times, I mean once for integer, once for float, once for double, and once for character. So we're going to do int float double and care actually char and we'll just change these out to be the right type so it's int it is float double if i can spell double there we go and char all right if i hit play we get our size in bytes so one byte four bytes four bytes for float eight bytes for double and one for character so that gives us the value in bytes. Now, there are other things we can do, but that would require talking about different headers, and that's just going to take way too much time to explain and walk through. Um, so I've included resources down in the description to read about the variables and their sizes. In the next video, we'll actually initialize and declare, sorry, declare and then initialize our guest number variable for our guessing game. And that said, if you've enjoyed this series, please hit that like button down below. And if you want to make sure you're here for the next set of videos, make sure to hit the subscribe and notify icon. And consider becoming a supporter on Patreon. As always, I look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial, and I hope that you have a wonderful day.